it's very empowering to know that you can build yourself your own shelter. It feels like the home I always felt I wanted, but I never could find. It feels like us. There's like we're in the walls, you know? We built the tiny house. I was more head of like how to put stuff together and make it functional, and she was more head of where to put stuff, how to make it look, but we both worked the tools. It took us two years to build it. The exterior dimensions are 24 by 8 foot 6 by 13 foot 6 from the ground up. I think we worked out the square footage to be just over 200 with the loft space. The tiny house was a good fit for us because I think we were at a transition in our lives where we wanted change in a certain direction that facilitated our growth. Yeah, when we were in the cities, we were both working actors slash bartenders, and it was uh, high-paced and stressful, and now I'm uh, in my carpentry apprenticeship here. So that's a big change. And I've been doing a few different things. I'm working on my yoga certification. I've been learning dog grooming for volunteering in shelters and stuff. And yeah, working at health food store, and it definitely gives the freedom to- Try things. To try at. Because it was paycheck to paycheck and it's like thing to thing and weekend to weekend, like we didn't do a great job of cataloging. However, we've got a fairly rough estimate and we think it was a, around $40,000 for the house. Um, that's not including like the rest of the stuff that we had to do, like get the utilities out here, build a fence and the platform and the roof and, the, and all that stuff. I mean, we didn't, we weren't alone. We were helped with either hours or, or you know, little, little gifts at birthdays. We went with the shape of kitchen uh, because when we were looking up efficiency for kitchens, I guess there was the U of efficiency, um, which helps just because everything, you're in the center and everything is spread out around you. So this is our dining room uh, table. It folds out and like it's on casters, so it wheels out. Um, and it's got these uh, nifty little stools that tuck right in there. So they're super out of the way. It also has uh, cutlery and kitchen utensils in there. Our countertop, my friend and I, he bought a mill and I actually helped him drag this specific tree out. So this was just deadfall, it wasn't cut down. Uh, it was just salvage wood. We put this together, pretty happy with that. We were gifted a whole bunch of barn board, which you can kind of see like accents of barn board throughout the house. We used it for veneer and we used it for trim. We did open shelving um, for all of our, for basically all of our upper cabinets to keep it kind of open looking in here. Um, so we did upper, um, we did open shelves here, here, and then we also turned our range hood into an open shelf. Uh, we have a double sink underneath. We keep cleaning products and compost and uh, like uh, bags and other stuff like that. In here we have all of our pans, to goes, um, baking sheets, um, and then like sundry items in the bottom there. Um, this was our, because <laughs> we couldn't figure out this was going to be dead space beside the stove here. So this was our solution to it. We put. Um, our garbage and recycling down there. So that's like a whole separate self-contained unit. Works really well, for, especially for where we live, just because um, we have to take all of our garbage to a transfer station. So this allows us to sort of organize it as we go and store a little bit more so we don't have to go as often. This fridge and stove, they're the same company. These were a bigger purchase for us. Propane stove turns on uh, just like that. So if you gotta cook a thing, it's a good spot. It's an apartment sized fridge. It's not giant, but it fits like, it fits a decent amount. We were worried, I think coming into here that we wouldn't have enough food storage. Uh, we were also worried about the stove because we were gonna get a smaller stove, but they work brilliantly. This is our pantry. This was part of our plan with these stairs. We were always gonna incorporate this, but we never thought it would be so functional. We have like dog food down there. We actually have our Wi-Fi modem down there. And then we have our canned goods. Uh, various things that Leela ferments, and uh, yeah, all the all the pantry stuff that you want, and it's like in actually incredibly spacious in there. We decided to build the couch area here. We wanted to have a proper couch, so I ended up getting this is a love seat, and it had removable feet. So, anyways, we removed the legs, and it kind of fit here nicely, and it feels like a good, a good height. Not too high, not too low. <laughs> but we also wanted it to be facing opposite the window so we could open it up in the summertime, get lots of natural light. And yeah, in order to do that, this was the um, the wheel wells actually, which is where the couch is and where this is. 
So we built a box over both and we turned them both into storage. So under here we have some little apple boxes just that we bought and painted. This is our little dog drawer. Here we have our sock drawer. This is Zach's work gear. And this is my typewriter, slippers, running gear, things like that. And on this side we have electronics and laptops and some incense. Under here on the right hand side we have linens. This is sort of a music area. This is a little thing our mum gave us where we actually keep our laundry. So it's our laundry hamper slash table slash footrest when you're also on the couch. Just behind here we also have odds and ends, things for the house like pictures we haven't put up and probably won't be able to. And then bags in there and a tripod. We got a lot of books so I had to really downsize but there's some books in there and then kind of art supplies. And then in here we have our own little drawer so this is mine and this is Zach so that's just kind of our like junk drawer kind of spot. We went for the stairs on the one side just so that the dogs could get into the bedroom and then this was sort of a space saving idea that we had was was to kind of mirror the stairs on this side so that we can get the extra storage but then still have this ladder that was actually just kicking around the property and it was the perfect size so we just took this um, ladder for the loft yeah, so this is the TV loft, super simple. We just have some cushions here uh, as a couch. We have the old big TV. We got a couple instruments hanging up. I think just because I am a little bit of a TV addict and Leela is less so, um, it was nice. To, it's nice to have a sort of separated space. It's set up for headphones, so it's less intrusive on the space. This is a reclaimed pallet wall. So we pulled apart a bunch of shipping pallets that we found. So this here is a reclaimed 100 year old door. I found this on Craigslist for 20 bucks. And we bought this hardware, which is a really nice space saver because with the opening and close of a door, it can be kind of a nuisance. A big thing for me was that I really wanted to have a bathtub because I'm the kind of person that loves a bath, especially in the cold winters. So that was kind of a non-negotiable. I said to Zach, you can get your own TV space if I can get a bathtub. And so we made that happen. So. We've got a, it's just a little bit smaller than full size. I'm five foot 10 and I can fit in there perfectly. And it's really, really nice to be able to have a proper bath in here. We have a shower as well. The plumbing of the gas and this was the only things we hired someone to do. This is our nature's head composting toilet. So far it's been awesome. We really like it. It separates the liquids and the solids. This here is our washer dryer combo, which is the newest purchase of our house. Um, it's actually really great. I can't believe how amazing actually it comes out. You do do a little bit smaller loads, but I just kind of do a little bit more often. It's a um, low water machine and it's also ventless. So yeah, this is something that <laughs> I personally really wanted. So it's a light mirror, but it's also a medicine cabinet. So yeah, it also works as like a nice light. So when I'm having a bath, I'll kind of like turn off the light. Just make it kind of cozy. This is our copper hammered sink and tap. So we have some towels there and yeah, makeup hair stuff, bath salts, all that kind of stuff. And our heater that heats our towels. So this is our wood post. I think it's become one of my favorite features about the whole house actually. Um, yeah, it just feels really nice to have a actual tree in here. We also treated it with just uh, natural stuff too, so. This is the bedroom. It's actually a really comfortable space. We have a window on each side, so we have a really nice breeze, cross breeze that can go between, so it keeps it nice and ventilated at night time. Yeah, it's a full size queen bed. So this is our closet that we made. So this is like Zach's stuff, my stuff in there. And then on this side, we've got our shelves. And um, we do have a few seasonal items that we'll keep under the house, like big winter coats and things like that. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we have it here and we've just kind of minimized our wardrobe. So it works really well. The house is insulated underneath with spray foam. Um, and that's the only place that we have spray foam. We weren't particularly keen on it because it's not super environmentally friendly, but it's 
was sort of the best option for us to keep a much more space in here and then also have a nice vapor barrier for the outside. Um, animals can't get through it. Um, the walls are all insulated with um, rock wool and then we have a really fancy brand of vapor barrier that goes over top of it called Siga Myrex. Because it's a really small space, we're, we were worried about water getting into the walls and causing rot and stuff like that. And then we also had to make sure that we put two extractor fans in the house. And the heat is electric. We have two small baseboards. The roof is essentially, uh, the canopy here is an aluminum canopy. Um, we can disassemble it. It's really light. We can take it with us if we ever do uh, move. It's got a gutter system so you don't get a bunch of rain drips. We haven't done the downspout yet though. It essentially extends our living space, um, which is great. Uh, we sit out here quite a bit. And then underneath the actual house, we have currently we're storing a bunch of wood and our winter gear um, and stuff under there because we're on a platform. It's up off the dirt, it's up off the wet, so we actually have like, we put our winter gear all in big Rubbermaid containers and we can store it in there. So this is our propane uh, storage. Um, we just use two 20 pounders. This is an outdoor hot water heater and it uh, should go up to negative 15, but then it's in the box. And uh, we're also gonna have a little heater in there, so it should be fine for our negative 20 winters. Where we live there's on a floodplain and we're actually on land that used to be an old riverbed so we had to build a four foot high deck. I think up here it'll get probably about two or three feet of water every three or four years it floods here. Yeah we yeah. had to get the tiny house craned on top of the deck which was a nail biting <laughs> experience. <laughs> we are kind of renting out the land. Um, we mostly cover our own utilities with like a very small amount of rent on top of it. We basically are paying about an eighth of what we used to pay and we lived in like the two most expensive cities in in Canada and yeah it's a substantial difference. It's really really nice to not have to struggle totally. to keep a roof over your head. The challenges for me so far is I knock stuff over a lot. That's it, that's the biggest challenge. I love this spot, but like we have not, I have launched cups off that thing. We do have a hairy dog, so the dog hair gets bad, but no matter where you are with a husky, it gets bad, it's yeah. just, it gets hairier faster. I just vacuum every day and. And the vacuuming is less long. So it's like, you vacuum for like five minutes, and you're like, oh, there's the whole house done. Okay. We haven't also been in here in the winter yet, and we are uh, just about to start winterizing, so we don't know the problems that we might run into in the winter time. A big part of the, the our gusto for thinking that we could do it too was we, because we were living in really expensive cities and we were a little bit cheap, we ended up getting really small spaces anyway, um, just so that we could save as much as we could on rent. We also wanted to build it. Like, I think that was mm -hmm. a big thing. Like we were just like wanted the challenge of building a thing. I think it was part of our journey being vegan really and slowly making those choices and it's not just the way that we eat, but it's the way that we live, down to the things that you buy, the products that you buy. Um, and then as soon as we found out about the climate impact of it, then because we were so excited about what a nice thing it was for the climate, it sort of highlighted sustainable issues in the rest of our lives that we hadn't addressed. Yeah, I think that aligning our philosophy and putting it into practice, no matter where you live, it's hard to, to do that, but we just kind of thought, well, we're doing this, like how can we take it a step further? This is our dream house. This is our long-term housing solution, unless we have children. But even if we were to do that, we, we've we already talked about it, we would maybe want max a thousand square feet. And if we our family stays the size it is now, then we'll, we'll probably just stay in here forever. It's interesting, so a lot of people are kind of like, oh yeah, so when you've done with the tiny house thing, but. To me, I'm like, this is the thing that we wanted to do. We've done it and I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs>